Greetings, this is Matt Presti, former president of the University of Science and Philosophy. Welcome to the Russell Museum. This is the science room, and I'd like to basically respond to a video I saw that was done by Neil deGrasse Tyson on his Star Talk podcast. He had uh, exclaimed, as you'll see in the clips of the video uh, yet to come here very shortly, that Walter Russell never had any reproducible experiments. In fact, he does have experiments that have been reproduced multiple times, one in particular, which you'll be seeing in this episode. So bear with us here, we'll show you an experiment that does in fact prove the conical coil concept of forming spheres in creation. So stay tuned for that. And I do invite you, Neil, in fact, I challenge you and your colleagues to reproduce this experiment on your own. And if you'd like, I can provide the measurements and all the equipment that we used for this demonstration experiment. And I look forward to hearing your results, sir. Let me make it clear that I'm delighted when I see people with active minds try to tackle the great unknowns in the universe. It's a beautiful thing that people want to participate on this frontier. What can happen is if you're a fan of a subject, let's say, a hobbyist, let's call it, it's possible to know enough about that subject to think you're right, but not enough about that subject to know that you're wrong. And so there's this sort of valley in there, a valley of false confidence. This has been studied by others, and it's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. But go to page two, and in here, he mentions people who he declares were persecuted because their vision exceeded the myopic view of their contemporaries. And he mentions Walter Russell, Nikola Tesla, John Keeley, and many, many more. Regarding your list, your list of people who have made brave sacrifices, I note that to be a genius is to be misunderstood, but to be misunderstood is not to be a genius. The work of Russell, Walter Russell, has eluded any experimental support. Science is about reproducibility. That's how science works. The reproducibility of results. The reproducibility of results. So the coils are wound in a Tesla bifiler. So in essence, the if you follow the positive, goes into the tip, it winds all the way through, but then it comes out and it double, doubles back in, and wind, 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 and then comes out negative either side. So that's what these are. If you're wondering what these sticking wires are out here. Okay. It's the loop back in so that it doubles back and it's now you got twice the number of turns. Right. By just having it loop back and double back around mm -hmm. again. And he patented that in the 1800s. It's really old. Why aren't we using it though? It's funny. So anyway, but you can do this with a, beside all that, you can do this with just a, just a normal solenoid, straight, just number of turns, okay. right? Um, and they're wired in a mirror image fashion. So this, the positive split can go two ways. They're clockwise because they're opposing. Right? Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. So it's pretty simple. What we have here is an electromagnet, but a pair of them. Right. Creating a pair of magnetic fields. Now, what you'll notice, though, is that these cones are not straight bars. They're not cylindrical solenoids. Right. Because a cylindrical solenoid either pulls in or sure. shoots out like a railgun. Right? Yep. With these, though, we actually have, and I'll show you after we do this, I'll show you that these magnetic fields are lopsided because the north end is contracted and the south end is expanded. And sure. so I now have a differential magnet where the north pole is stronger than the south pole, which is weaker and so on and so forth. Mm. 
So why, why science wouldn't be interested in that is baffling to me because now we can make, in an MRI for example, we can make Tesla's strength's magnetic field, but we can make the outside pole very, very weak. Yeah. So there's nothing on the outside and everything's concentrated on the inside. Same for a motor. I saw a patent guy was trying to put hullback arrays yeah. to force the flux on the inside of the rotor. Right. The outside of the rotor was nothing. Yeah. And that forces all the torque into the middle of the motor where you want it. You don't sure. want it on the outside, you know. So anyway, so this is just a DC power supply if you want to get that on the camera. It's set for 16 volts. It does a max of, you know, two and a half amp or three amp actually, zero to 50 volt. And all I'm gonna do really here is, so when I turn the power on, you see the voltage drops immediately. So we're only putting a half volt through, but we got two amps, two and a half. And that means that amperes are flowing if they flow. Right. I'm not saying they do, but if they flow, they're flowing through that coil now. And you can see, do you see how it's making a ball? Mm -hmm. It's making a sphere. And actually, even if I touch it, right, it still wants to form that spherical right. pressure gradient, as Russell called it. Can you add a little more just to show how it will go to the spherical? Yeah, it always wants to go, you know, not toward the top of the thing. Right. It's building in the, it's bulging in the middle, which is Walter called oblation. Because I'm going to show this to some flat earthers, and I don't want them to think that when you touched it with your hand, that that's actually proves that the earth is flat. Yeah, and the other thing is I can, <laughs> I can run this experiment vertically, and it still makes a sphere. So no matter sure. your axis, if the axis goes in that direction, or if the axis goes in that direction, it still makes a sphere because the equator of a conical magnet is not a straight line. It's a curved equipotential gradient. And we're creating it on both sides. So it's like focusing two convex lenses at each other. You create yeah. a spherical gradient. If, if, they're, if they're a flat bar, you have this kind of rounded. And as you shape it, it comes together as a, as a sphere between them. Yep. So just to prove the point that it's the electricity creating the field, if I turn the power off in three, two, one, you can see that the filings are no longer suspended and we're back to 16 volts. Yep. So there's no current flow now. And you can see how, if you zoom in, mm -hmm. you see how there's some residual magnetism? That's because of the compression. If I were to magnetize this end, there's absolutely no residual. Right. So there's even now flux residual magnetism in the core, but only at one end of the magnet, not at the other. That's what concentration is. Because of this compression effect. And Walter said we only ever create energy by compressing from the outside in, like you pump air into your tire. You can't actually have in this universe a force of attraction that pulls from within the center as Newton described in his concept of gravity. There is no inward pull. It's everything's being electrically compressed from the outside, from the outside in. Okay. So matter's frozen into place yeah. versus pulled into place. Now what does that mean for physics? Well basically you can take the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear forces and throw them in the trash can. Yeah. Because there's nothing forcing or overcoming the protons to slam them together with neutrons, which are nonsense because you can't have neutrally charged matter. It makes no sense to have neutral charge. All matter is positively charged relative to space. And then it negatively discharges back into space, but it's never negatively charged and it's never neutrally charged either. So up to yeah, some basis of a ground plane or a zero plane, yeah, sure. So this whole concept of charged particles and fields and everything, we can basically... Russell said we have to start over, to scrap the whole thing. Because it's not a field of charged particles. We actually have light at rest, which we call still magnetic light. And then there's light in motion, which we call the electromagnetic spectrum or colors. Sure. So essentially hot light is what we call matter. 
And when matter's frozen in that hot condition of concentration, it becomes the elements of matter that we have in our periodic table. But as soon as we set something on fire, as soon as we melt anything, it becomes invisible. We call it gas, and then we can't see it anymore. Right. We send it back to the zero. It becomes tenuous. It's, mm -hmm. it's expanded beyond our sensory range. Right. So now I'll show you, I'll disconnect the solenoids in the pair way. And uh, I'll just pull one of them out, just a single one. So this is done too with toroidal magnets. They do this, you know, and try to do fusion. You know. Yeah, pinch effect that they create in a tokamak or a uh, fusion reactor or yeah. anything like that. They're trying to create compression, magnetic confinement. Right. They're really, Russell said they were actually pretty close with that one because he says the whole universe is a pinch effect. Yeah. Even though that they're, they're considering it to be this exotic form of, you know, creating matter, but essentially all matter is created that way. Uh, but they're doing it in a tube to try to get it in a cyclotron, yeah. right? Um, why don't you just create compression from two ends and hit each other from both sides? Yeah. Instead of trying to accelerate towards speed of light. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, a disk rolled into 3D as a cone, and that's really... So I just have some iron filings here. Yeah, now this guy, Erwin Mueller, photographed yeah. atoms. Okay. And what he found, and it's quite clear in the photos, is the center of the atom is vacuum. This is tungsten. Yeah. Where's so, the nuclei? So they don't have protons, and they don't have neutrons. And that's why I say you can throw out strong and, nuclear for, strong and weak okay. nuclear force. There's nothing there to hold together. So it's a lattice of atomic structure of tungsten, but oh. you see at the center. Yeah, you're not seeing anything. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like we're just pulling stuff out, but this doesn't equate to a black hole either. There's no force of attraction inside of that. Yeah. And the reason tungsten has a hole, Darren, is? Because it's after carbon. Right. So... Carbon is the only one that we would look and that it would seem to have a nucleus. It would be fused. Yeah. That's the only one, though. Walter said they're, all the elements are metals, even chlorine, which is a gas, as a metal. And he said there's only one non-metal, which is carbon. Okay. Check that out. Yeah, that's Erwin Mueller's yeah. work. That's a great book to have, too. And I'm you know, sure. that was published in the 60s, so why do they still teach you about the putting the balls on the sticks? as the atom yeah, and then the put them together in the molecules because uh, <laughs> yeah. that's not nothing like what it really no. is no, no. so now i'll turn that on right and i can touch this so do you see how that end of it can pick up a lot a big mass of filings mm -hmm. right see that mm -hmm. and i'll turn it off to show you that it's the electricity right it's the electricity around the cone in a vortex that yep. creates that compression. Now I'm going to flip the magnet over and turn it on. So you see how it does not pick up as much. And what we do pick up is only around the outer ring sure. edge periphery of that base of the cone. And this is also exactly what Walter Russell said would happen because the magnetism isn't at the center. It's only appears to be at the center when it's compressed yeah. at the other end. And then you can cr cr pick up a lot more. And then I'll turn it off and now it drops it up at sure. either end. So there's nothing there now. Yeah, very cool. It's just a proof of concept. <laughs>